Yeah, this is wild. I'm on my stallion in Ghost of Tsushima, the new port that came to PC. So we're on the RTX 4070 right now, and we're getting like 100 FPS. So just first of all, this game runs super well, and uh, everybody knows it's a great port. Then first off, let's just turn on some DLSS. I mean, we don't really need more FPS, but we might as well just turn on DLSS quality here. You can see that we jump from like around the low hundreds to like 150 now. So we're only getting more and more performance. This looks really good. This game has access to DLSS frame generation. We can turn this on. All right, so we went, we're at 145 FPS and uh, now we're only going to like 163. PS doesn't actually go up by a whole lot. Uh, frame generation is on it. Yeah, yeah, it feels pretty good. I, I guess we get a few more frames. It's not anything earth shattering at all. However, though, what's a headlining feature for this game is absolutely crazy. You can turn on FSR3 frame generation paired with any kind of upscale of your choosing. Actually, you don't have to use DLSS. I mean, I'm on an NVIDIA GPU. I should probably use that one because it's the best upscaler. FSR3 frame generation. I'm sorry, I'm trying to look at my screen, but cat. She's like blocking like half my view right now. You can see that we turn on FSR3 frame generation and we hop into here. And what's even crazier is we're at like 160 FPS with DLSS frame generation. We're actually getting more frames with FSR3 frame generation. I mean, that's cool to start. You can use FSR3 with DLSS. And I just want to say straight up, there's like no noticeable difference. And I know you're going to see on the left side of the screen, it's like, whoa, you have zero milliseconds of latency. It's insane. It, it just doesn't work. I might as well just hide it. It doesn't work with FSR. But yeah, you're watching a 60 FPS video, but I'm just going to say like from what I can see in the game, this looks absolutely phenomenal. And you can use it with any upscaler is a huge deal. And that's for one main reason. It's because of this. So you've seen the top left of the screen, I just put in the RTX 3080. And you're probably seeing the whole entire lighting of the game changed at an instant. Cause now it's sundown now, it's nice and pretty and everything. I'm on my stallion. 3080's here. I know a lot of you guys are on these 30 series graphics cards. They're very, very popular. This matters a lot to you. And that's because these cards don't have access to headlining feature of RTX 40 series and that is frame generation. A new AI that generates entirely new frames rather than just pixels. So you can see here at the bottom left, we only have access to FSR 3 frame generation. You know, this is a game where, you know, we're on high settings here and we're achieving about 100 FPS. If we want to go ahead and go ahead and turn up the settings to very high to make the game more demanding, you can see we drop from over 100 to like 80 FPS. So that's still a lot of FPS. So this isn't maybe the best example, but if you're on a lower end 30 series car and maybe like a 3060 at 3070, that isn't as fast as this particular one. Or if this is in a more demanding game because Ghost of Tsushima is a very like I want to say well optimized port. I mean it is well optimized it doesn't stutter or anything but it's very performant because this is a PS4 game this isn't a PS5 game and if we go ahead and turn on it's like hey what if you want some more FPS well this 30 series card doesn't have access to DLSS frame generation because NVIDIA was like we're just going to forget about all the people who are bought our graphics cards before and uh, you know you can't have frame generation you know you'd want to be able to use DLSS on this because this card and 20 series cards both have access to DLSS upscaling. So you see we got from mid 80s FPS to like over 100 FPS and that's awesome. It's like, oh, I want to be able to achieve a little bit more. I have a higher refresh rate monitor and all that kind of stuff, but I can't take advantage of DLSS frame generation. Here's AMD allowing you to use DLSS alongside FSR3 frame generation. And you can see now we're at like 150 FPS and I'm just going to say I'm only at 120 hertz on my monitor right now, so I can't even see past that, but I mean, it looks fine enough to me right now. We've seen a little bit with this with FSR3 frame generation. There's an FSR3.1 update that's supposed to be coming soon. That's going to allow you to decouple or basically detach the upscaling part from the frame generation part of FSR. Because in other games, you aren't allowed to do that. If you're using FSR 3 frame generation, they lock you into using FSR upscaling as well. What we're seeing is we can use DLSS with it. And this is basically making DLSS frame generation NVIDIA's headlining feature for RTX 40 series obsolete. There's, there's no reason to use DLSS frame generation when you can use FSR whenever or however you want and check out this i've got the native image from the game i've got the dlss frame generation version i've also got the fsr3 frame generation version just so we can compare image quality 
on these guys. Now, the tool that I'm using to do this is NVIDIA iCat. If you want to try it out, it's in the description. And though NVIDIA is being kind of a jackass with how they're treating DLSS frame generation and stuff for their older cards, they say, screw you guys. But they do make good tools. I mean, yeah, I mean, iCat's good. Image comparison and analysis tool. That's what it is. So first off, I need to explain what the heck we're looking at here. Okay, so I captured all of these at 120 FPS. And these are all V-Sync at 60 FPS we're only looking at frames that are also being generated and bringing the entire image to 120 FPS with these frame generation ones. And that is how it works in the game, if you are wondering. The reason I record this at 120 FPS is so that we can go here and we can slow it down in post. So we can actually slow this down all the way to 25% speed, which means it's actually 30 FPS being shown to you here. So we're at 25% speed at the moment. And I'm going to go and hide my face cam. So on the left side of the screen, obviously, without the frame generation, the image looks quite a bit more choppy. All right, because we're seeing actually about 15 FPS slow down here, whereas the other ones, you know, are at 30 FPS, even slowed down to this point. So you can see the frame generation is definitely working. We're getting more frames, all that good stuff. Frame generation ones, I, I'm trying to look at this and let's go ahead and actually take out the native image and let's just zoom in so we're just on dlss frame generation on the left and fsr frame generation on the right and guys i can't tell a major difference so we just see him going here i mean this is slowed down to 25 percent speed and I'm like, where is the major difference? I will say the DLSS one looks a little bit smoother. What's kind of weird about that, the reason it might be looking smoother is actually because DLSS has a problem. So I was trying to do that whole V-Sync thing of locking it at 60 FPS because they don't allow you to use V-Sync. So the thing that allows you to sync your refresh rate of your game with your monitor on DLSS frame generation which sounds weird that AMD's has a better feature set than Nvidia's, but that's what we're seeing here is that DLSS does not work with VSync. I could not get it to work. It blacks it out when you go to use it. So that might be why the DLSS actually looks a little bit smoother is because we're getting more frames from DLSS. So here I'm on the horse. And by the way, I tried to get as high quality footage as I possibly could. Like I tried to use a really high bit rate to get that. And in terms of image quality here, Guys, can you even tell? Let's look at the grass on the right side. This, like these, the fact that it looks a little blocky here, that might just be because the video itself is compressed in the way that I recorded it. I mean, I tried to use very high quality recordings, but, and you can just see, I can, I can barely see, I, I don't know if there is a difference. So it is maybe possible, like if we weren't at 60 FPS to start, say like we were frame generating from a lower frame rate, and there was more distance between frames, so it kind of had to make up more of the, the things. Maybe we would have more issues with FSR frame generation. The only other thing I'm seeing is I don't know if this is screen tearing or if this is the frame generation, but do you see here, as I'm kind of turning the corner, do you see how the, the DLSS frame generation looks smoother? Whereas the FSR one looks choppy. It's kind of like it's delaying the top half of the screen. The DLSS frame generation, I think looks smoother here, but it isn't that insane, which is more of a stationary scene, all right? The motion of the character looks smooth. Obviously this is relatively small motion, so it isn't gonna be as pronounced. See as he raises his head back up from the bow, see if there's any issues with that. And I am just not seeing really anything that major, guys. The only major problem where we're turning, which I'm going to tell you, I don't see this personally when I'm playing the game. But as I'm turning this here, it looks less smooth on FSR frame generation. So if we put these head to head, DLSS and FSR frame generation, they look really good. And they look very comparable to each other. You know, if you would make the argument that, you know, DLSS frame generation looks a lot better, so you still want a 40 series graphics card to use it. I mean, FSR frame generation is like, it's on par enough that I don't think the normal person is going to tell. Maybe DLSS frame generation is marginally better with the smoothness, but then the added benefit that you can use DLSS upscaling combined with FSR 
frame generation and you just get the perfect combination because if we look here as well, DLSS upscaling on the left side and I have FSR upscaling on the right side. These are in performance. So this is upscaling from 720p all the way up to 1440p. And honestly, I think FSR looks quite good in this game, but do you see some detail? If we zoom, zoom all the way in, I mean, we're zooming pretty far. You get some more detail with DLSS. You can see the, the tree branches and the, all that kind of stuff. You can see some more of the leaves in the distance, whereas it kind of looks like speckly nothing on the FSR version here. Yeah, you're seeing more detail on the FSR or on the DLSS version, my bad. It's kind of recreating more of it, kind of giving it more of a natural look. Though I will say that I think FSR actually has a sharper appearance. So if that matters to you at all, if we like look at this little pouch on Jin here, it looks a little bit sharper on FSR compared to DLSS. I mean, that's the only main advantage, but you know, a lot of games will allow you to just you know change the sharpness of dlss as well so that might not be a big issue but i think in terms of detail reconstruction dlss is creating more details than what fsr is being able to deliver here and that can be a major deal that's why combining dlss with fsr frame generation since fsr frame generation can be used on so many different gpus it gives you such a huge advantage now and this is a major major feature that is just awesome to see it's going to allow more people to use frame generation than what could before and you get to use it with your best upscaler that you have available you know even if you're on intel you probably want to use xcss i have some testing of xcss as well on natively on an intel gpu here and i don't think xcss looks that good in this game personally i think it looks a little flushed out but you can use xcss with frame generation on fsr3 as well so this is a absolute major w here and fsr is just making nvidia's headlining feature kind of pointless we looked at the quality why would you really use dlss i mean if you have access to it you might as well use it but we're talking about everybody who else who doesn't have it you're not really missing out on that much because fsr3 frame generation has improved so much and we're probably going to see some more improvements with fsr 3.1 soon because what's weird about ghost of tsushima is this is only an fsr 3.0 game it's not a 3.1 game which is supposed to you know decouple the frame generation and the upscaling components of fsr i do think it's a little odd how we're able to do that in Ghost of Tsushima because it's only an FSR 3.0 game. Now, it's working in this and that just gives more potential that more games in the future that integrate FSR 3.1 in the future are probably just going to get better and better because they're going to allow you to decouple it, use DLSS, use your favorite upscaler or your best upscaler you have available to because so many people are stuck on GPUs that aren't 40 series because 40 series hasn't been that exciting so people aren't you know, rushing out to buy them and upgrade to get DLSS frame generation. Then it starts to make you wonder, because it's clear that AMD is able to do this. They're able to run this frame generation component with different upscalers. Why the hell did Nvidia not do this? I know, I know that they used DLSS frame generation as a huge component to make you want to upgrade to 40 series graphics cards. I mean, it's a huge selling point until FSR 3 frame generation started coming out and more people had access to frame generation technology. Basically, DLSS was the only one to do it for like over a year or so. I mean, Nvidia's excuse is that it needs optical flow accelerators. DLSS 3 has four components, a new optical flow accelerator, the optical flow accelerator provides the neural network with the direction and velocity of pixels from frame to frame. NVIDIA's excuse of why their older cards can't do it. But I'm wondering if NVIDIA is just going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can get it to work on our older cards now. I mean, AMD clearly has proven it and they're probably going to start taking over that part of the market. NVIDIA might start allowing other people, other graphics cards owners with older cards to use it. If you don't have a 40 series graphics card, you have to make a different version of DLSS frame generation that doesn't use those optical flow accelerators that, you know, that they, they need. I feel like Nvidia isn't going to do that because I don't know how they had market their 40 series graphics cards to upgrade to, or even their 50 series cards. I don't know what their 
gimmick is going to be this time to get people to upgrade. AMD didn't have to do this when you think about it, because AMD could just make FSR for their graphics cards and their frame generation. They don't have to do this. This doesn't even make people want to buy AMD GPUs. In fact, this encourages people to stay on Nvidia GPUs. Unless they're just trying to get the goodwill of the consumer, people aren't going to buy AMD cards do this. I don't know. I don't get AMD's play, but it's really cool that this is available. I'd say the only problem with FSR frame generation here, Nvidia has DLSS, right? DLSS is a very known, well-recognized technology and well-respected technology. And that means it is in the mind share. It is in the minds of consumers, of developers, everybody who's working on games and putting in it. People want to see certain features in games, all that kind of stuff. And the only problem with FSR frame generation, I think, is it just isn't known as well. You know, if it continues to do well like this and put up a really good fight against DLSS, especially giving more features and compatibility, that's awesome. Maybe we'll see FSR getting into more games, their frame generation. But at the moment, DLSS frame generation is probably going to be the first uh, feature that a lot of developers are going to want to add into the game. Unless a lot of developers that are making games are in on the loop of, you know, FSR is more compatible and stuff. I love this. This is awesome. It gives you a lot of potential. I also just wanted to point out that Ghost of Tsushima runs absolutely great. I tested a bunch of cards and all that kind of stuff. I have no problem with it. It runs absolutely gorgeous. Okay, that's been about it for me. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a good one. I'm gonna see you in the next video. Peace.